Today, the United States peacetime Navy recognizes electronics as a vital part in the nation's first line of defense. The Navy is going all out to perfect more and better equipment, train men in electronics so as to be ready for whatever the future may bring. This is the emblem of a chief electronics technician. Today, this insignia represents the goal of thousands of young men alert to grasp the opportunities offered by the Navy expanding field of electronics. Their careers begin with recruit training at Great Lakes, where the men learn the general fundamentals of seamanship. Sure, some of it is tough. Who says Navy means tough? But for those determined to make the grade, learning to be a sailor and to act like one is an interesting and stimulating experience. With the completion of recruit training, they move on to basic electronics school, where training for their rating begins in earnest with instruction in the fundamentals of electronics under experienced Navy men. Soon the class is getting down to the real stuff of electronics. Painstakingly, the Navy instructor explains the various types of equipment. Yes, this is really interesting to the boys. They get it all down. Classroom discussion is encouraged, and occasionally students come up with sharp questions. Well, the instructor was about to answer that one anyway by identifying and demonstrating the several devices, which he now proceeds to do. The class gets it through the standard Navy method of basic instruction. This consists of first letting the men see how the instrument works, as well as hear a detailed explanation of its operation which they are careful to note down for future reference. Later, the men round out their knowledge in the electronics lab by breaking down and assembling various components of the gear in preparation for that day when the fleet or Navy air arm may call on each man among them for a performance of 4.0 or perfect. But it isn't all a grind at basic electronics school. The Navy sees to that. For those interested, the recreation program provides a wide variety of outdoor and indoor sports. And then, too, there are other kinds of recreation. The electronic technician's last training lap brings them to advanced school on Treasure Island or the Aviation Electronics School at Memphis. With the men thoroughly grounded in the fundamentals of electronics, here the emphasis is on the repair and maintenance of actual fleet equipment. What's the instructor up to now? From his furtive manner, looks as if he's jamming up the set. Say, that's a dirty trick, and he wants someone else to fix it. Well, actually, it's just an application of one of the Navy's practical teaching methods. Often, an electronics instructor will foul up a set and then stand by to see how quickly the tech can locate the trouble. Yes, advanced school means a whirl of intensive wind-up training where maintenance of the Navy's electronic gear is exhaustively covered. Surface search radar, air search radar, sonar, all are taken apart and put together by the techs until electronics are just about coming out of their ears. But all the work they've put in is worth it on the great day when the men reap their reward at graduation. Electronics technician. Yep, that sounds pretty good. The commencement of a career that can end with the three stripes of a full commander. But that's looking pretty far into the future. So now let's follow the first steps of these men when orders come transferring the class to their various duties. Soon with normal ability and application, they may become chiefs, like this experienced member of the Navy. Yes, that's the same old eagle on his arm, but he's mighty proud of that brand new and distinctive rating of Chief Electronics Technician. It means he'll be a vital cog in whatever Navy unit he's reporting to for duty, whether it's with a silent service, on a destroyer, or as electronics crew member with one of the fleet air wings. Some will see service as electronics specialist in the crew of a flat top. 
or experience the thrill of taking off the deck. In one of the Navy's tough carrier-borne torpedo planes, as maintenance men for radar and Loran, those magic eyes of pilot and navigator developed during the war and now standard equipment on all Navy planes. Other electronics men will find themselves aboard a sleek cruiser, while still others will fill billets aboard one of our big battle wagons. Carrying the latest type of electronics equipment, all these Navy units require, in peace as in war, large numbers of trained technicians to ensure constant maintenance of their electronics gear. Below decks on the larger Navy units is CIC, Combat Engine Center. Here are electronic devices of every type, searching out through the surrounding blackness of sky and water, sounding beneath the ocean, to trace the movements of every ship and plane in the task force, and detect at a safe distance any unidentified units. Operators with eyes scanning the scopes quickly interpret their findings, report each significant fact to those coordinating the operations of the force. But above and beyond the pride Navy electronics technicians take in doing their particular jobs and doing them well, is the pride each man takes in becoming part of a Navy tradition. A tradition of invention and pioneering in the new science of electronics. For in the field of electronically guided missiles, the Navy first blazed new trails to develop and perfect the famous Navy bat. Here, secured to the wing of the mother plane, in this case a big Navy bomber, the deadly missile awaits. Until the target is picked up and located by search radar, the operator intensely watches the target on the scope. And the parent plane launches the bat. Accurately guided by electronic pulses, the bat plummets away, making straight for the target. Okay, scratch one. Again, in the field of electronically guided missiles, the Navy conducted the famous test at White Sands, New Mexico, to trace by radar the flight patterns of rockets and so evaluate their efficiency as instruments of war or science. And as a climax to these tests, the Navy recently fulfilled its parole by being the first to launch an electronically controlled rocket from a ship underway at sea. Every Navy electronics technician inherits a part of this pioneering tradition and the opportunity to make it a continuing tradition by his own creativeness in his chosen field. Then too, beyond a specialized technical skill, the Navy offers the electronics technician opportunities for a broader knowledge, an intimate acquaintance with the far places and peoples of the world, the Mediterranean, the islands of the Pacific, the Orient, the Caribbean, South America, but with all the fascinating places which the electronics technician's duty enables him to see and know, when he's back aboard ship, his thoughts begin to stray homeward to his loved ones. And here too, the Navy offers a lot. Security for him and his, with good pay and medical care for dependents. Later too, the Navy guarantees security after a man's years of service have begun to mount up. Then he can either stay on in the respected position those hash marks have earned him, or if he chooses, after 20 years he can retire. Take things easy. Enjoy life. Do all the things every man dreams of doing someday, but can't unless he has what it takes to retire on. The assurance of continuing pay, such as the Navy provides. With all these things in store, stimulating work, travel and adventure, security, the electronics technician can well look forward with zest and excitement to the Navy career that lies before him. For he has tied his future to electronics, the science born yesterday of war, and holding out who knows what wonders
for him to unfold tomorrow